Welcome filmmakers! We are changing the filmmaking process as we know it with new technologies. And we want everyone here to be a part of that change. That's why we are excited to have you today. We will discuss the transformation of production processes and how to use new technologies in filmmaking with our special guests. And what we are most excited about is sharing with you the demo of our innovative product based on artificial intelligence. And let's start our panel discussion. Together with our guests, we will cover different directions of using new technologies in filmmaking. And we will take a look at them from different professional perspectives. And please welcome our first guest, William Cardwell. Hi, my name is Will Cardwell, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about trends in technology investing. I've been investing in early stage technology companies in Europe since early 2000s, and I'm lucky enough to be an investor in two of the companies you'll hear from today. Film you stage in Perfection 42 through my funds in Lithuania called Open Circle Capital and Belarus called TechMets Ventures. Today, the economy is going through some big shifts and we've seen huge impact in technology public markets. And so I want to touch on that a little bit as well as trends in the private markets and talk some about what an investor and or entrepreneur can do to navigate these interesting times. Look forward to it. All right, so I'm just going to give you a few thoughts about what uh, the way the world is working now on the technology side, uh, investing side. So, and you can see my overall comment here. We're at the top of the market on the edge of a storm, maybe, and I'll talk a little bit about that. So focus on what really matters to your customers and partners. So where are we? Well, uh, Igor said, uh, I mean, uh, so I'm a venture capitalist. I invest in very early stage technology companies in, if you, in, in Europe, uh, basically the Baltics, Nordics, and Eastern Europe. And what we see now, this is from uh, a recent, uh, the kind of the most recent uh, survey of venture investing activity. And you can tell that uh, last year was just crazy. So by far an all time high of both uh, amount of investment in Europe. So 102 billion euros and number of deals, which was uh, over 10,000. So huge amount of investment activity and actually, Europe is definitely, it's not caught up with the United States uh, in Asia, sl still slightly behind Asia, but it's really, really grown. Uh, so that's kind of on the positive side. Negative side, again, if we're totally up to date, uh, which is uh, as of uh, February 14th, Valentine's Day, 2022, there's a storm starting to happen. So the technology, uh, this is the technology index, uh, NASDAQ. And you can see from a high around the end of last year, it's down almost uh, about 15, 20%. So, and, and a lot of volatility. So uh, it leaves a lot of technology investors kind of wondering, are we on the edge of a storm now? Or have we actually already made the adjustment and are on the way back up? Nobody really knows. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, it, it just when I show this slide, yes, last year was amazing. Uh, this year start, started off uh, very heavy, a lot of investment, but now uh, investors are a little bit more careful. So I want to kind of highlight where the investments kind of are going or plan to go in 2022. Um, the big, big waves that are going, uh, artificial intelligence, obviously, the metaverse, now a huge thing, uh, not only driven by, by Facebook's change, but all the uh, kind of growth in AR, VR, uh, and as well as cryptocurrency, which is the fourth trend. Obviously, 
see financial technologies also very high, electronic vehicles and batteries, cloud gaming, 5G and robotics. I would argue here in this, in this group with uh, people looking into the film industry, definitely our AI, metaverse, cryptocurrency, cloud gaming, 5G are all to a certain extent drivers to uh, kind of investor interest in that segment. Um, but I want to maybe dig one level deeper and say why, what, what happens now in, in periods that where the market's very high and there's a lot of volatility, I would argue that um, you really need to focus on the areas where, uh, where, where you can generate value for your customers and, and, and partners. Uh, so when in doubt, focus on generating moats, kind of the definition of a moat is a key competitive advantage that a company uses itself to differentiate. So you uh, kind of as, as providers into the film industry, uh, technology providers, you should focus on places where you help the customers get network effects, uh, cost advantages, kind of impre- increasing their switching costs, making it more difficult to change. Uh, help them from a brand building and tradition perspective, do, build up cultural modes, uh, resource modes, kind of helping develop their uh, expertise and uh, patents, legal protection, et cetera. And then really this last one, really important, new modes, combining data, network effects, online marketplaces, search, and social networks are uh, kind of now emerging as really a combined way for companies to separate themselves. So, you know, I'm, I'm just going to steal a comment from probably the world's greatest investor, even though he's an old school guy that's been around forever. Key is assess, to assessing how much uh, industry is going to, is the key to assessing value of a company is not how much it's impacting the industry or how much it will grow, but rather determining the competitive advantage of any given company and above the durability of that advantage. So again, boiling that down for you as a, uh, in, in the industry, how can you actually create, um, help create competitive advantages uh, for your customers and partners? Uh, and these are some lists. So that's basically my talk. I wanted to just kind of shout out, I, I'm actually an investor in both Film New Stage and Perfection 42. And I, I really respect the other companies on this panel I think both of those companies and, and all the ones speaking here are ones that are uh, helping generate different types of advantages for, for their customers with artificial intelligence. So I think for you guys, the future is bright. So that's my talk. Um, happy to stick around for questions later or whatever, but hopefully I was close to meeting my five minute maximum. Thanks, thanks, Will. It was really, it was really insightful, and hope this year will bring us more new technological areas for investments. And I wish growth to all the startups. And now, please welcome our next very special guest, Roger Christian. Christian's innovative work created the look for Star Wars, Alien, the life of Brian, winning an Oscar and nomination, introducing the iconic lightsaber to a global audience, and many, many more. Roger, you are welcome. Uh, we are so excited to see you today. Please uh, tell us about your projects and uh, what new to expect in 2022. So, um, from my point of view, like you know, the world has changed of cinema. Obviously, they used to be um, very easy. You go and get estimates, sales estimates, and you could bank that and make your film on that. Nowadays, with streaming and everything, that's all changed. And um, so, when I'm doing an independent film like I'm doing now, I'm doing two. Um, you have to go to financiers and the first thing they're saying is, okay, can you make it for around this price? This is what we've got available. Or you have to give them an idea traditionally to get an idea of that. So you could use um, movie magic scheduling. The problem is it's about 10 days to enter all the data. So what you have come up with, which helps filmmakers no end, is a simple online way whereby you can import your script and I can do a a simple schedule online. Um, For instance, where I am aware and knowledgeable of every single place I'm going to shoot and all the sets, everything. So I have that and I know which actors 
I can kind of accommodate cost-wise. So I can, before I start discussing the finance with a financier, I can legitimately say, look, I can make this film in five weeks. And I've scheduled it. And I know which actors I can. So some actors, you know, you have them in for a week. They're big names, but that way you can afford it. So I knew I can compact them into a week. And I can be assured very simply, and I did, I did my schedule on this one for a film um, I'm doing now in, um, in about three days, and then had a, an idea of what I could shoot where, and I could say, no, I can do it, and then the line producer who's working somewhere else can do it. Then simply, your program can be then put into Movie Magic, which is essential for movie um, production because everything is done and categorized in there. So it's a much more coming trend now, unless you're with a Netflix deal or an Amazon or Apple, to make the film and then you present it with financiers coming in. And, and with independent films, you have to show that you've got something that you can market very well, in which case, like a film I'm working on, Black Angel, came from a short film I made that went out with Empire Strikes Back and went viral on the internet when it was um, restored and went out about six, seven years ago. So the idea then that if you can make it for a price, you can always sell it. So there's a kind of magic numbers. You have to come in under $10 million, say. You know you can sell it. As soon as you go above that, actors or whatever you're required, it suddenly jumps to about $30, $40 million, which makes it untenable to invest in upfront, take the risk. So in a way, it's helped me no end um, being able to do this schedule because I've proven to my financiers and we have finance now and they had a limit they could put in and I had to work out, can I do it for that? Well, that's based on what I could shoot in time and the actors. So I've managed to, um, to prove all of that. I think, you know, the, the oncoming technology in all these areas, and I'm involved in NFT now, I'm involved in various different things that are going on. We have to adapt very quickly. And I, you know, I, <laughs> everyone knows, and I've got a documentary coming out now, Galaxy Built on Hope, which is what's never been revealed is how the designer and I actually created the Star Wars universe, how we created the whole look. It's never been covered. So I was able to schedule my interviews and how I was going to edit and do it all into a schedule up front. And it's reliant now on uh, um, social media platforms and it's reliant on PR in a very different form. So, you know, and, and as George has said many times now, there were only five people stood by his side on, on um, Star Wars, and that was myself and John Barry and two of the art directors. That's all. Nobody else believed in this film. And we, I was always breaking the rules, <laughs> coming in budget but breaking the rules, and I've done it ever since. And, it, you know, when, when I made Nostradamus in Romania, which was a, big film, again, we had $4 million to make a $20 million movie. In those days, we did it with the strips, the old fashioned, so we could cut those out and stick them down and play around with them. We didn't want to use movie magic up front because of the time it takes. And, and I don't need all that technology up front. You know, always, and that was George Lucas's mantra, keep it simple, keep it doable. And I think you, you've provided a very simple way, and I've been co uh, cooperating with you, Ivan, in, in what I think I would need to make it even better up front. Um, and the world is changing fast, and I've always been part of that world. You know, everyone told me, you can't go to Romania. It's just a, not even a year after the revolution. You can't go and make a film like that. Well, I did, and uh, we made it, and I came in on budget, and I had huge actors in it. Um, I, I think you have to be experienced to break the rules. 
you, it's like architecture. If you've got a grounding in the basis, then you can break the rules. So what you guys have done there is, is broke some rules now because uh, it was actually needed in the marketplace. And I think I'm, I wouldn't, you know, I'll encourage filmmakers to try to do this because you need this knowledge when you go to a financier. You know, that there are finite amounts of money that they're willing to put up based on your actors. And for me, it's past experience, um, both with the Galaxy Built on Hope, my documentary. It's, it's, it's going to release on Blu-ray. We're taking a new attitude because Star Wars fans buy Blu-rays in the hundreds of millions. They want these things at home. They don't want to rely on a streamer that might pull it at any minute. Um, they like collectibles. So we're launching only on Blu-ray. And so I've done a two hour, 15 minutes with some incredible people involved. Gareth Edwards, who directed Rogue One. I've got Guillermo del Toro as part of it because he saw Star Wars when he was a young kid and it made him a filmmaker. Um, and I've got, you know, other celebrities and I've got people who've never been ever seen on camera or in books who were involved in the making of the first film. It was almost a legacy that I was pushed to make this documentary because it had to be covered. Um, you know, and the, things like the lightsaber is now the most iconic prop in the history of cinema. I, I describe how I made it, how I found it. The Tokyo Warriors Club, which is the gaffy stick, which Boba Fett now is... <clears throat> using to huge popularity in uh, the Mandalorian and Boba Fett series, <clears throat> I made for a few dollars because I, I had to find something and adapt it. So the low-res technologies of the past, if you use them correctly now into the new technologies, then that's, I think, a very important um, transition in the coming you know, in the coming few years now, and there are there are a lot of opportunities. The pandemic has changed viewing. You know, a lot of people still aren't going to the cinema, only to the big name American kind of blockbusters. Everyone else is watching at home. So there's a voracious appetite for the streamers. And um, we have to change and accommodate that. So that's what I'm doing, because I love... And the reason I'm independently doing, say, Black Angel, my Galaxy film with financiers here in Canada is because I get a creative voice. I get an original voice, which is not that often seen anymore. Um, this is very important. Thanks, Roger. Uh, one more question. Please tell us more about uh, maybe you can announce any exact date of your project. Please, we are so interested. Yeah, the the, the Blu-ray is coming on May the 4th. <laughs> May the 4th be with you on the Star Wars actual day we recognize and fans recognize. So that's coming on May the 4th. And we're, we're now, we'll be having obviously website and all of this stuff is all being constructed now because I've just literally finished after two years making the documentary. And then um, I think we'll probably have it uh, uh, sold through Amazon because it's global worldwide everyone recognizes it so i think we're going to do that um and black angel i'm hoping it'll be out this year whenever we we get the final go ahead and we're, we're looking at actors all sorts of things now so that is coming and i've got an nft project going on my original film which um i'm very happy to get out into the world in a wider way, in a different way, because I, I kept all of my, you know, here's an example. I had to do a schedule because <laughs> I had a crew of nine people and no money to go and shoot in Scotland. So I had to make my own schedule on a piece of paper, draw out lines in pencil and write in exact location I could shoot when I had like an hour to shoot one location and move to the next. So I made my own little schedules. I started there, you know. Um, I'm practically minded. I put on producer hat as well as director hat. So you have to make things work. I had a finite small amount of money from the British government um, and I had to make it work. I was in charge of that. So I knew I had to shoot 
one location, move to another, move to another. I had to schedule it. So that will be coming very soon as well. So a lot of stuff coming around Star Wars Day. Thanks, Roger. Thanks, Roger. I really prepared a lot of technical questions, but you definitely answered all of them. And good luck with your projects and oh, may good. the force be with us for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I believe that uh, new technologies will really help us to make our jobs easier and probably it's just a new space for innovative ideas and solutions. Now let's look at innovative topic from another perspective. Please welcome uh, our next guest, Simona Vasete Kudakowski. Hi, my name is Simona. I am CEO and co-founder of Perfection 42. Glad to meet you. So today's goal is to show you how AI may be applied for different parts of film creation pipeline. And Perfection 42 is targeting production stage. We are empowering creators to reach unlimited quality without a single line of code. So we are giving the power of AI to the creators and helping them to reach Disney level quality, while also cutting the time needed to create the content from hours to minutes and freeing their time for the things that actually matter like implementing artistic vision and all of this without a single line of code or deep understanding of AI. So uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, to Roger, that uh, thank you for a great talk and I am honored to talk uh, uh, after you. I am a huge Star Wars fan, so this is a big thing for me. So. Uh, so uh, us, uh, uh, all of us are here uh, to showcase the AI capabilities, different capabilities for uh, how AI can be applied for movie creation. And Perfection 42 uh, is targeting production stage. So what we are striving to do, we are striving to give creators very, very powerful AI tools to reach unlimited quality, Disney level quality, while cutting the time needed to create uh, uh, to create the scenes from uh, hours to minutes and helping them to focus on the things that actually matter, like the artistical vision of the movie and all of this without any uh, technical AI understanding. And our technology works in, with images. So what you do, we actually uh, you give an original material that you want to be altered in any way. And also you give a reference images for the AI to understand. And all of this information is used for the AI training. After training, AI becomes an expert of your particular task. I'll show you two examples, uh, but actually that could be a lot more. And this is a, really an, an imagination of the artist, how to use this. So after the AI is trained, uh, you give the all before information. So though all the uh, original information to, and AI renders uh, it in the style that you are striving for. So two examples that I want to showcase is rendering and uh, how that technology can be used there. So in this way, what you do, you actually render in a very low quality. So in this case, we have 128 samples per pixel, but your quality that you are striving for is actually 30,000. So if talking in time, so to render this kind of image takes around six minutes, uh, to render this kind of image takes 24 hours. And I've imagined that this is not not like one frame, but actually you have 62,000 of frames. So for you, the rendering time is very, very long and also super expensive. So in this case, what you do, actually you render all the original image in this uh, very low quality and some keyframes. So in this 30,000 frames, and we teach the AI this particular style. So in this way, it becomes a denoiser. And what it does after training, it actually can render all the uh, low quality images in a very, very high quality uh, sequence. And if we would compare it with Open Intel Denoiser, which we believe is one of the best now currently in the market, you actually see that you have a lot of blur here. And this is because this is a gener generic tool. It, it can never saw this kind of uh, sequence before. Well, in our case, what we have, we have a details here and you actually can 
see how much even like the small, small details were preserved and were recreated from this kind of image. And the other uh, showcase that I want you to uh, show is how this technology can be used in rotoscopy or style transfer situations. So uh, now currently we are uh, working with one studio that is creating a movie, a hand-painted movie. So that means that they have a huge number of artists that are painting every, every frame by hand. So what we, how we can help in this kind of situation. When you have a live action sequence, like this one, not sure, can you see it in the proper way via Wi-Fi? But this sequence is 99 frames. So what you do, you give us this kind of sequence and also several keyframes that uh, showcases the style that you are striving for. And we give this information for the AI to learn. After training, AI becomes a painter that can actually replace some of your painters or uh, they can up their style uh, to the new high. And uh, after, after training, this is what you can achieve. So this was already uh, hand-painted by AI. And if you look into the competition, AppSync is doing very similar, uh, can do a very similar job at the moment. However, in their way, they have a lot of artifacts left uh, that, uh, that needs to be fixing after in the, in the post-production. While in our uh, situation, we actually can work with 4K quality or even higher and uh, from the studio that we are working at the moment, but they told us that there are no artifacts. It's completely, they even could not separate uh, the difference between hand-painted work and uh, AI-created work. Mm -hmm. So the quality that we can achieve is super, super high and very, very close to the hand-painted one. So those were two examples that I want to show you. Uh, however, as I mentioned, uh, when understanding how technology works and having great creators like yourself uh, using this technology, this can be applied in a multiple different situations of the movie creation. So that's it. Thank you for, uh, for, for your time. I hope that uh, it was interesting for you. Yes, yeah, thanks, thanks, Simona. It looks really great and I believe we will be much more creative with uh, innovative tools. And uh, you opened the discussion about artificial intelligence and our next guest will continue that topic. Please welcome Vladimir Avsienko from Respeacher. Respeacher is an Emmy Award winning voice cloning system that allows one person to speak in the voice of another particular person. Please Vova, share your thoughts about AI in voice over dubbing sound design and what to expect next in 2022. Hi everyone, uh, happy to be here. Um, you basically stole my line. <laughs> um, but uh, as you already mentioned, guys, Respeacher is Emmy Award winning technology that allows one person to speak in a voice of another particular person. I'd like to share my screen with you to show you a short video that explains best what we're actually doing here. Hi, guys. I'm Bova and I'm business development executive here in Respeacher and now I'd like to show you some Respeacher magic. Hi guys, I'm Bova and I'm business development executive here in Respeacher and now I'd like to show you some Respeacher magic. Hi guys, I'm Bova and I'm business development executive here in Respeacher and now I'd like to show you some Respeacher magic. Hi guys. I'm Boa and I'm business development executive here in Respeacher and now I'd like to show you some Respeacher magic. Hi guys, I'm Boa and I'm business development executive here in Respeacher and now I'd like to show you some Respeacher magic. Um, you could have seen our work in the Mandalorian season two finale where we synthesized young Luke Skywalker's voice and also in recent uh, series by Disney Plus, The Book of Boba Fett. Uh, in one of the episodes. Um, what we're trying to achieve, what we're actually achieved here in Respeacher is we gave, uh, we detached the voice from the voice owner, completely redefining voice over industry. We work closely with film, TV, animation, dubbing and localization studios. Um, 
One of the main use cases for film, TV, and animation would be de-aging. And the best example would be Mandalorian with Luke Skywalker's voice. Um, also, resurrecting voices from the past. Uh, a great example would be 2021 uh, Super Bowl opening, where uh, we, in collaboration with 72 and, uh, 72 and Sunny, Digital Domain and NFL, um, worked on the voice of legendary coach Vince Lombardi. Um, another gr great use case would be kids' voices. Uh, kids' voices, same as normal human voices, uh, tend to change with age. And with our technology, you can get access uh, to a particular voice in certain period of time, basically 24-7. Um, when it comes to dubbing and localization, we have uh, two main use cases. First, we've developed a technology that we call cross-language. We can give the ability to a celebrity speak in their own voice in perfect Mandarin, Japanese, Portuguese, Spanish, German, or any possible language that you can uh, think of. Um, but later on, we found out that in many regions in the world, uh, particular celebrities are dubbed by a particular voiceover art artist for the past 20 or even 30 years. And people in those regions don't even know how real a celebrity, the voice of real celebrity sounds like. Um, what we're offering to these studios is, uh, it's actually we're working with one big Ukrainian dubbing studio, creation of voice li uh, library. So um, they have more than 150 voices. And what we're going to do, we're going to collect all those voices, train for them several uh, big neural networks, and any available voice uh, actor can drive any of that voice. So um, it solves a lot of problems with logistics. Mm, in general, our technology gives the ability to uh, give scalability, flexibility, and some new creative approaches to the content creation. Basically, we make content cheaper, production of content quicker and faster. So we've developed another platform that we call Voice Marketplace, uh, where uh, small we want to give uh, ability to small content creators um, to get access to, at the moment, it's 40, oh, actually 53 plus generic voices. There are no famous voices there. Those are, but those are voices of real people that we found. We paid the money and got their permission to use their voice in uh, our system. Uh, but since the technology could be misused and it's a little bit could be a little bit dangerous, um, we never give any famous voices there. So great, great. Right. Thanks for Thank the guys. future is now. At that year will be extremely interesting. And we arrived at our most interesting part. Now it's time to talk about artificial intelligence in pre-production. As you see now, AI is ubiquitous and it has become a part of filmmaking process. Our next guest will share his vision about using AI in filmmaking. Please welcome Igor Dubrovsky, CEO and founder of Film Stage. Hi, Igor. Tell us your story about film stage creation and how the new technologies changed your life. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Ivan. First, thank you for coming to this event. It's a pleasure to discuss new technologies with professionals like you. The idea of the project was born in the result of my backpack being stolen. Yeah, it's true. I went to my friend to help him with film in Los Angeles, and after that, I decided to visit my another friend in San Francisco. And we went to listen to some jazz in the local club. And when everything was over and we went out of the club, I found out that the trunk long in our car is broken. Yeah. And my backpack with all my stuff, like laptop, camera, and documents, had been stolen. So that, that was the reason why I had to stay in the US longer, until the, the moment I received new documents. To survive, I was looking for a job on the film sets, like some pilots for Netflix and Amazon Prime, and I got to know what the filming process was, communicated with professionals, and understood what problems they were facing. 
Every video project starts with a piece of paper, the script. Professionals have to manually go word by word and send by send and basically write and down or copy paste all necessary information, like props, costumes, information about actors, locations, and so on. They use spreadsheets, Google documents, or some special software for that. We want to help filmmakers reduce manual work, not replace humans. It's very important. So we're here to help professionals with smart AI assistant. So our guest mentioned several products that help filmmakers with the power of AI. AI. Uh, we all believe that new technologies can change the game. And at the end of my part, I want to thank you, our community, and personally, Roger, for your amazing feedbacks. Thank you. Thank you, Igor. Thank you. It's really great. And the future is already here. It's true. And uh, we are moving to our next part. It's a technical demonstration of our artificial intelligence tool, the Filmus Stage platform. And please welcome to the stage the CTO of Filmus Stage, Ruslan Hamidulin. Ruslan, welcome. And uh, please show us how it works, basically. Hi, Ivan. Thank you for giving me the word. Thank you to all the guests and participants. Thank you, Simona. Thank you, Roger. Uh, it really was a pleasure to listen about your experience during the production of Star Wars. As well, I'm a huge fan and meeting such legends in personal, it's uh, really an event for me. Thank you, Willem, for telling about your thoughts on uh, startups and investing. So uh, now, my name is Ruslan. I'm a CTO of Film Stage, uh, and I'm responsible for the technological part of the pro project. I'm responsible for uh, making this available to everyone. And now I'm going to show you what we got for you. So when Igor came to me and told me the story about his travels in Los Angeles and the US and told me how the pre-production works in film industry, it already became clear to us that there are room for improvement. Because, well, filmmaking starts with the very important process. At the very first step, you got just a screenplay, a piece of paper, and it's pretty much like a blueprint of a building. You have to organize the work. You have to understand which materials do you need, which professionals do you need to hire to fulfill the project, and how to organize to work them in cooperation. It's a routine task, and it might be hard sometimes. And uh, in the real world, it all starts with the process called script breakdown. So a professional, linear producer or assistant director or someone who's responsible for that takes the screenplay and starts to do something like that. Basically goes through each scene, carefully finding all the meaningful information, making notes, highlighting the, proper, the props, actor details, location information, stuff like that. Later, uh, they put it into a uh, software, maybe Movie Magic or Studio Binder or something else. Sometimes they just use a uh, raw Google Sheets or Excel or something. A lot of people still are kind of used to their pen and paper approach. So it usually takes a long time. As uh, Roger mentioned, it's normal to spend 10 days on this. So for us, it became clear that there are rules for improvement. And uh, uh, we started to develop our project. It's called Film Stage, as you know already. And yes, the first line tells you our main idea about that, what we want to bring to the audience. So I'm going to show you how it works. Here's your dashboard. And here you work on your project. Basically, you create a project, upload uh, your screenplay, uh, hopefully, you've got a screenplay in PDF or final draft. It's uh, like uh, most common cases in the market. Let's do exactly that. So I've got a demo screenplay for you. It's taken from a later Joker movie. So screenplay looks pretty much like this. It's a bunch of text divided into scenes with location details, where it happens, when it happens, notes, actor names, you also you can find here dialects. Basically, this is like a more or less technical information, what happens in the frame, what you need to shoot this particular scene, and, and uh, the same for the rest of the movie. Uh, 
in the real life, the process breakdown, it's a very first step. It takes anything from a couple of days to a couple of weeks. There's a room for, for improvement. We created and rented on a bunch of uh, existing movies. And let's see how it works. I just chose the, scroll, the script. Now I'm creating the project. Just a sample title. You can add a picture or add some description. I'm going to need this now. So our product is available 24-7 in Google Cloud. You can just sign in and check it by yourself. By now already, we got our screenplay broken down into a scenes. And now our neural network, OK, it finished already. Uh, it was fast this time. So what actually happened? The neural network recognized lots of meaningful information inside the script, like uh, location details, data, cast details, some cast additional information, details, a few properties, as you can see here. We can easily navigate through our script. And uh, pretty much what happened, we got the raw script breakdown in less than a minute instead of days of just copy pasting, marking down by hand all our cool screenplay. Because in real life, it's really long. For a full picture film, it's around 100 long page document. So sometimes it, it might be it might be boring. Uh, what we got here. So we recognize this kind of categories by our neural network model. By default, you can change it to something or just remove the tag, for instance. Or maybe we you need something special. Let's add some customization to that. For instance, maybe this must be done for special effects. Let's create a new category for that. Like this. So here we go. We got a new category for uh, the particular item on our screenplay. So now you see how fast and easy it was. You can go anywhere from here. Also, we respect the life of filmmakers and how they prefer to do their stuff, how they used to work and their experience and uh, what you can do next with that. Also, you can add some notes. Maybe you already got ideas about music, what you want to add to this particular scene. Maybe it can be set. I don't know. So what you can do next with this, you can export the exact this document to a PDF with all the markdown, which a lot of our customers find really useful to be able just to save your progress and show it to someone else. Also, as Roger mentioned, the industry is, uh, well, like, don't like, but uses movie magic. So you can export the result of our breakdown to movie magic. Now we got .sx file, and you can import it in movie magic and continue to work exactly as it was in the golden days. Also, you can export to spreadsheets and continue to work in Google Sheets, Excel, or whatever you want. It's uh, just a CSV file. As you can see, as you can see here. So just a PDF file of this exact summary. I'm now on the summary page where you can see a short summarization of what we were able to find and what you added to your breakdown as well as notes and all the little details. So breakdown is important. It's the very first step we want to give you a very powerful tool to do it quickly. But it's only the beginning. What to do next with this? On top of that, we are able to continue to build cool stuff. Now I'm showing you the schedule. You are able to create your shooting schedule based on this breakdown. Let's say we want to put this into uh, one shooting day, maybe this one, this, Let's add some more. So we kind of planned our two first shooting days. Let's assign a location. We need a mental hospital here, definitely. 
Uh, I don't know. Maybe this is just for reference. Looks good. Here we go. So that's it. We are building a really powerful platform for filmmakers to give them a chance and tools powered with artificial intelligence and neural network to be more productive, cut the cost, spend less time, and switch to creativity as soon as possible. Thank you for listening. I'm ready to answer your questions. Thanks, thanks for that demonstration, Ruslan. It, uh, it really works extremely fast. And uh, now keep your calendar clear for demo requests from our users. And <laughs> yes, be prepared 24-7. Ruslan just mentioned numbers about the accuracy of the model. And uh, a very common question is how artificial intelligence can work as accurately as a human, just like a cinematography specialist. I think our next guest, Andrei Karelkov, the CEO of Film Stage, will help us to understand how it is possible to teach an artificial assistant to work as accurately as a human. Welcome, Andrei. Keep the stage and tell us about your high school for AI, please. Hello, everyone. To create suitable and sustainable neural network model, we did a lot of experiments. To be prepared, we trained our custom neural network on hundreds and hundreds of broken down skin plays. Then we provided access to our first customers and received their feedback. This helped us to understand important details and customer needs to optimize the system. Now you're able to see what came out of it using our web application that Ruslan has presented to you. And it's very important to mention that we are able to customize and optimize the model based on user input. So in the near future, users will be able to use exactly the model they want to see. Thank you. Sounds really fantastic, but for sure, the best way to believe is just to try it once. So don't forget to book your demo right now. And let's check questions uh, in our chat and intercom. And by the way, thank you for all Valentine's messages. Uh, that one is great. Um, is it possible to teach the model to make specific marks and tagging like I do with my team? So it sounds like a question for you, Andre. What do you think about that? Uh, yes, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, our system is sens sensitive uh, to user input and uh, it's possible to create a special model uh, just for a particular customer uh, or for everyone uh, with additional tags. Uh, we also can consider creating a closed separate environment for uh, our customer by their request. Thank you. It's clear. Thanks, Andre. Let's move on. Uh, that one is very popular. Mm. When to expect a rise of machines? And here's a probably related one. Uh, is it real that machines can replace the humans soon? Mm, uh, we're lucky to have a professional in the field of rise of machines. Uh, Ruslan, that question is for you. Yeah, thank you. Good question. Thanks, James Cameron, to bring in us this fear with the Terminator seconds. So we are all waiting for the rise of the machine since our childhood. Well, my answer is no, because I treat artificial intelligence and neural network just as a tool, a useful, sustainable, powerful, very quick tool. Pretty much the same about artificial intelligence and networks. You just able to cut the cost, be more productive, do the stuff fast, faster and do incredible things like voiceover of non-existent or long dead person, just to mention. So no, no rise of the machine, but more fun. Uh, thanks, Ruslan. I really want to believe you and <laughs> let's move on. Uh, that one is really interesting. Why should I spend my money on software, not on my team? We work relatively fast. Hope we finally met someone from the superhero team of Flash. Ruslan, what do you think about that? As Roger mentioned, the world is changing with the arrival of uh, streaming platforms like Netflix, Amazon Prime, and uh, Disney and Apple TV Plus. There's demand for content 
users want more content, videos, movies, and they want want it fast. And is what is really important. You need to keep to your budget. You need to understand at the very early stage how much money you need, uh, how much you can afford, and you need to do that quick. So we are really useful at this stage at the very early stage of planning. You are able to cut the cost, save time, and we are not going to replace a professional we're just giving you our next step advantage to to do in your job that's it great great so thanks Roslan and 2022 will be a race for new technologies thank you all for all your activities and uh, we received so many amazing questions and we will definitely send you answers via private messages or emails or probably Ruslan will answer it during your private demo sessions so we see that new technologies are all around us. In 2022, artificial intelligence-based tools will grow and adapt to new spheres. And that process makes a positive impact on filmmaking. Let's spend more time on creative tasks, not just on routine. And it definitely will help to make our movies even better. Thank you all for being with us. Thanks to all our incredible guests. And let's keep in touch through social media and emails. And feel free to book a demo for yourself and your team right now. We're open for you 24-7. And let's change the future of filmmaking together. See ya! Wow. 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 Wow.